Previously on Uongozi. Kariako is known basically for years to be the main producer of uh, Saiso baskets. Sasa mnataka nini kwanza ndio tuanzie hapa. Kama wewe mbe yako lazima wewe juu. Na nini? Ah let me show you one that probably you did not see. My idea was not based on research. I did not see the spaces uh, in the document. Ali, but when Jonam came I asked just stop. Ladies and gentlemen, the person going home today is Hardlin Musui. There are only six contestants left in the round, but only one of them will emerge Uongozi. Who will it be? The winner of Uongozi will get a six-month leadership prize which will include an all-expenses-paid trip to experience six leadership and governance institutes across four continents, Asia, Africa, Europe and North America. A total of 1.2 million shillings stipend over the six-month period and a 3 million shillings grant to implement a public project of their choice. The Uongozi show is presided over by three judges, Mumbi Kaigwa, Tom Boyer and Mweni Lundi. From time to time, there will be a guest judge depending on the task. Good morning, contestants. Good morning. Let me take this opportunity to congratulate you once again for being the final four remaining in this competition. Today, there will be no task. Instead, you will be going through a series of individual interviews with panelists that have been selected to interview you on your background. At the end of this process, be aware that two people will be eliminated, leaving only two to battle it out for the remainder of the competition. Good luck. Uh, my project, well, I initially started off thinking girl education, trying to, since I have a health background, trying to maybe marry the two. Um, but I found that there were many projects that had to do with um, girls' education, the girl child, so I tried to narrow it down. So since I live near, I live in the Dagoretti constituency and very close to Kaangare, um, I've decided to do educating the girl child, but educating them so that they have health um, a health-related background. My project is about this group of people in society, those that have just been recently divorced. Yeah, I'm talking about the, the young women. The aim of the project or the objective is actually first to, to educate them on how they are going to raise their children, and secondly, to give them skills on how they are going to cope with the issue of stress. Um, my project is... Um a youth empowerment project and I've picked on um, youth civic engagement program. So I've dubbed it um, Youth Pub. I intend to create a platform for the community and this platform will be controlled by the youth. I want to construct a borehole which will uh, be used in irrigating the farms and also at the same time selling that fresh water to the, to the public in generating money towards paying school fee for orphans. Hi, Jonah. Hi, hi. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. Tell me about yourself in 30 seconds. I come from Siaya County. Um, one of the contestants uh, in Wongozi. Um, I have a project proposal that I've presented to Wongozi. It is about youth civic engagement. What about youth and civic engagement? Engaging the youth uh, and, and specifically specific governance issues. issues. I've dubbed uh, it a Youth PAP, that is Youth Progressive Agenda Podium. I intend to create uh, a podium for the community where they can get to engage with the people they elect to the officers. So this platform is supposed to bring together youth so that they participate in governance uh, process. So why do you think yours is unique? I wanted to focus more on um, 
what I know, which is technical training, science, and health. So I said, how can I combine the two um, to make something that can help people? Because the project has to be short term and long term. So um, I would go and infuse the, the love of science and nurturing science in girls who really want that. And then later on, um, how would you do that? With science clubs. So I focused on the Gretchen uh, constituency because it's where I live. Uh, would you want to tell me something about uh, anything in your project in Kiswahili? Okay. Me na fanya project kusu kusu masomo ya wasichana. Wafanya wafanya. You say the CV is three, uh, three years old. Actually, four years old. Why would you submit a CV that is four years old? Um, I think I've, uh, I've updated it. Yeah? Yeah. Where are your referees? Okay, being someone who's lived uh, all over, um, referees are hard to find. So for medical, there are three who are being, uh, who I will use now for when I'm applying for, um, for, for a job after I've, I've qualified. So I've not actually had a job where, from something I've stringed. So the, medical, the referees I do have, the, the letters on the way, and um, those are the three medical referees that I will use to get medical jobs here. Uh, after making my, my registration, finance has become a challenge. Okay. So it is something that I, I'm sure actually my communication was that uh, when I get ready with my finances, mm -hmm. I get down and uh, proceed. So you, you're not a student, you registered. Yes, yes. So you lied that you, you're a student at America Intercontinental University. Um, I don't think if that was a lie. Uh, <laughs> okay, let me laugh. <laughs> Mister, okay, leave the room for a few minutes and then you come back. Okay. Yeah. Um, you say you're a fun-loving person. Yes. What do you mean by that? And what uh, what do you do to have fun? Fun for me is outdoors, um, especially now when I lived in the Caribbean for six years, almost six years. It was the beach. Um, there's some hiking in in um, you know the parks that they had there. Here, it's socializing with family, especially family time. Family time that I've missed so much since I've been away for ten years. So. You wrote a project mm -hmm. of, a, of a girl called Mary, who fictional character, and you want us to believe the whole project. Does it make sense to me? What part doesn't make sense? The whole thing. I don't think you're going to win the competition. Mm -hmm. I, I know it's not my place to tell you this. Mm -hmm. Unless you're willing to tell me the truth before you leave this room, I don't think I'll recommend you to win the, the competition. The reason why I threw Joram out... Uh, I wasn't kicked out. There was need for consultation. I couldn't keep up with these answers because I was reading one thing and it was telling me another thing. Making, um, I mean, a judgment on the basis of, of what you have, that in this particular phrase, you started with the. This other one, you are starting with a. So I feel it is inconsistent. For me, uh, that is too kind of, uh, uh, for lack of words, that is too petty but he was now becoming very careful and guarded because I was actually asking the, comparing what, with what he wrote and what he was telling me. The worst part that I didn't like is the idea of telling me that you are not going, I'm, I'm seeing you are not going to win this competition. I think that was sensational and needs an apology. Prepare yourselves for cross-examining. It's intense. I'm glad I'm wearing my sweater because I've sweated through my clothes. Ah, Iguana, that is frying pan. <laughs> You are laughing. You better cry, eh? <laughs> no, it was tough. Look at I know it, eh? No, Abuana. Mm. Tell me about your project. First, I've called it the promise. The women who are out of marriage, who, whose marriage at one point or another hit, hit a, a rock. The moment they're divorced, they have these hard feelings, so they need to heal. If first, first I'm, I'm able, able to bring, like, say, 10, 20, 20 30, 30 together, mm -hmm. then, then that's, that's a good number already to start uh, something like a group. Your worst moment was uh, in your entire life, yeah. was in the situation room. Yeah. Can you explain that? I've not ever been accused of integrity in this task. I've never been told, Adam, you did this wrong. But one thing I'm always told is, you don't give space. But this is a competition and a group work. I have to put my best to be, to, to be afloat. You wrote your proposal, uh, which is quite impressive, uh, but half of it was 
a lot of copy and paste yeah. and you didn't attribute. Yeah. Why? It's not necessarily copy paste, but information on, 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 on Mandela. It's copy paste in that you did actually. Yeah. From many websites, like three or four of them actually. Yeah. You should have copy pasted the sources of the information. I think that's a, a, a luxury on my part, and uh, I'll correct that. You're 24 year old. Yeah. Uh, single, single, never married, never married, never divorced, never divorced, and you want to go and help single women. Exactly. For why, why not target men and you're a man? Most men are working, they are able, but look at, for example, I come from the coast province. Ladies, many females have, do not have an employment. I understand you also authored uh, a paper yeah. in malaria. Was yeah. it, uh, was this your paper or was it a group paper or? What was it about? It's, it's a group paper. It's a project we, we worked on. Project. You put it in your CV that uh, this was a group uh, project. Yeah, you know the CV, the CV I didn't say this is as a group project. Okay. I, uh, you just said you wrote a paper. I said I wrote a paper. Why not do a project that actually says that the law should be enforced? And for those single women in Mombasa to know their rights. But if someone doesn't know his right or her right, how are they going to ask for it? How are they going to demand it? And so part of my project is also to enlighten them on their rights. When Muslim women divorce, they are allowed to go back home and they are catered for. They are actually absorbed. And the counseling is done within the, the, the local setup. So how, how would you engage with these women uh, from their family side and themselves and your uh, project? How, how do you bring them together? Okay. Okay, in terms, for example, of, okay, the family goes along with perhaps counseling, but then perhaps that ends there. There's the issue of how she needs to begin to start life. I um, understand you made a statement saying that uh, luckiest girls get married early. What do you mean by that? The lucky girl is a girl who have no mental torture, can, can motherly take care of the, her children, and if given opportunity, when, even if she's married, Goes to, goes to school uh, as far as secondary and, and university. If a girl in, in Mandera has decided to go to university, she's not married. Yeah. She's a very unlucky girl. She's, not, she's not. She's not. The message I want to pass across here is the issue of advocating for their rights. Huh? It comes well in a song. It's easy. Sing them. Hallelujah to my Lord God, my Redeemer, my Savior. How much research have you done? Because uh, Mandera is quite a dry area. Yeah. How sure you'll get water? There is there is a village before you reach Wargadud. That's our Wargadud, Wargadud centre. What's which the possibility of getting water there? It's very, very, very. Uh, the water table is a, it's a bit high. So assuming you don't win the money, are you still going to go ahead with the project? Yes. How are you going to do it? Uh, Red Cross has put the same project for the community. Yes. So I can approach Red Cross with. Uh, that that same mind of helping the community, but put, putting up the same project for orphans. The fact that you are in Kilifi yeah. and this project is in Mandera. I will be among the, the, the communities managing managing the, the the project. In fact, this is a big a big competition to anyone to those. those so there is competition. This one will be subsidized. Okay. I'll, I'll say it's it's focused on the community. Will be subsidized. The water will be sold at lower price. Mm -hmm. The farm produce will be will be sold at lower price. So, in fact, this is a project to beat in in, in Mandera. What have you learned in Ongozi? There are things that I can really make happen in the society. And this one lesson I got it from the my experience in Korogocho, especially when we were doing the cleaning, we were able to mobilize the people, and we made Korogocho clean even without money. Finally. Finally, I would like to say it's a project, not a personal project, but it's a project which I want to put for the community and the less fortunate. I hope I will win this competition and realize this project moving forward. Hey brother. How was it? Berlin, Berlin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, Berlin. Mm -hmm. You uh, enjoyed it. You are with the lady. Not, not enjoyed it. Uh, Didn't enjoy it. Uh, it has it enjoyed you. It, it's yeah, it's hard. Mm. They research a lot <laughs> on me.
So those, yeah. <laughs> how do you find it? <laughs> it's hot. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it was very hot. <laughs> you have sweated. <laughs> you have sweated. You have sweated. How was it, Nani? Solo? It was hot. It was hot. Uh, yeah. Hmm? That's what I knew. Nothing approached these guys. They searched on me thoroughly. Mm. They went online. There's a paper I authored. We authored as a group. Mm. They removed it. Mm. Mm. So the paper is put here. Mm. It's not you alone who authored the paper. Why didn't you acknowledge the people? Mm. <laughs> 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 Maybe it was about a website I quoted. You see, it, the information was from Google. Mm. So I ended up on that website. I got it. Speaks about different issues. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so it was. I was put on <sighs> task. Think you can tell who will be leaving the show tonight? Send us a text message to 6264 starting with the word Maasai Market and stand a chance to win an Uongozi gift pack. Welcome judges, welcome panelists and thank you once again for joining us and helping us delve a little bit deeper into, into our candidates, uh, the four remaining finalists. Uh, we'd now like to, to hear your impressions of the sessions you had with them uh, and uh, perhaps if we can begin with uh, Eden Abdullahi Muhammad. A lot of um, experience in, uh, in the medical research background. Um, had a little bit of a problem uh, in not acknowledging some of the work that he presented as his own and uh, he was able to clarify that it was uh, an, an omission and uh, he apologized for it. He was very impressive, actually. Of all the projects that I saw yesterday and went through it, thought, I think him, he knows what he's talking about. Uh, Aiden has identified an, an, um, a basic necessity of life in, in his community, and that is water. Um, he's planning to drill a borehole to, to provide water for the community, earn an income and that fund will go towards supporting uh, the orphans in the community. Eunice has been all over. She did many internships. She has, there's no referring her CV. She did have references from she, her academic... Uh, from what yeah, you because and the excuse was that, you know, I've been abroad, um, I can't get hold of my professors, and, you know, there's email. Um, and, there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> when she said she was very fluent in Swahili, and I tested her, and I realized she's actually forgotten that Kiswahili which she grew up with probably mm. uh, for the last 10 years. Mm. Uh, she never spoke of Ministry of Education. For that project to work, we need to partner with the Ministry of Education. Mm. Uh, she, she can't tell you five schools in Dagoreti, and that's where she comes from. She has never met a single headmaster or headmistress in Dagoreti. So basically, the project can't work. Jerome is a very interesting um, individual. Um, he has very basic uh, standards of education. He, he says that he went to university from 2009 on um, interrogation. He had not even attended any of those institutions. Uh, if you go through the CV, you'd be very impressed. Uh, he mm. talks about going to American University. He's going to these colleges. He talks about being a director, deputy executive director of a program, CEO of another center. Secretary to another job, director of resource, another job, finance director, very many lofty positions. He's very assertive when he talks to you. He's almost on the verge of shouting. Uh, but he lacks content and substance. What about his project? Was that, uh, did that restore any confidence? No, it can't work. <laughs> <laughs> it's called you, it's called you pop. <laughs> Is there anything redeemable about this particular project? I would say it's a good one because I think dialogue is always good. And if the youth have a, a platform to, to dialogue with the leadership, that's great. But not in this magnitude. He lacks basic honesty. Yeah. He can lie with his eyes open. Mm -hmm. You look him in the face and he's lying to you. That's like a Kenyan politician. As long as you can lie in broad daylight, uh, and we'll be very defensive about it. Mm. Um, I think that's that's a no-no. Solomon CV. Yeah, he is in school doing engineering. So the CV is, uh, is like a student CV. I'm in school. Full stop. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Mm. 
Well, Solomon is young, so it's okay that he's still in school. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because of that fact, he cannot probably have a lot of experience in anything much, mm -hmm. apart from the volunteer work, a little bit of jobs here and there. His project uh, is very interesting. He's quite passionate about uh, this emotional stress of divorced women. Um, yet he was raised by a, a single father. So ideally I would have thought uh, that he would uh, address the issue he knows best mm. and that is single fathers. Then he used data from the Muslim community in terms of st statistics on divorce. Mm -hmm. So he automatically assume that he's targeting the divorced Muslim woman. Mm. And he doesn't seem to have an understanding of the dynamics. His intentions are just clear. You can see that he's, he, he, he cares. He's an honest person yeah, actually. He, yes. Once again, thank you very much for helping us go through this process. It's been a pleasure. Uh, what change do you wish to see in Kenya? And how are you, uh, you know, that, that uh, change? And I imagine all of you wish uh, for the complete implementation of the Constitution. And what is your contribution? You have chosen to prioritize leadership, you know, for sure, which is, which is uh, important. My two favorite Quotes, Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, the first is, uh, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. And the other one is, he says, my life is my message. So you need to study and internalize values of transformative leadership uh, in the Constitution. But my message to, to you guys is that don't fail. Have you had a challenge in your life or an obstacle professionally? That has you know, shaped who you are. My life changed dramatically when I taught at the University of Nairobi. And uh, I believed in academic freedom. That came to an abrupt end when you know, my classes were full of security people, yes. uh, where books that we were supposed to read disappeared. I found myself in detention. And when I came out, uh, you know, uh, I was, I realized that there are certain things I would never accept. And there are certain things that I had to fight very hard to, to change. I wanted to know how a man like that dealt with his kind of challenge so that I know that challenges come and go. So as long as you look forward and you, you know that your goal, you keep to your goal, um, there's no challenge that can hold you back. So coming back, a uh, girl education has always been something. And if you win this competition, you think three million will have an impact in that? Uh... I mean, small steps, small steps. So I think scholarships are, yeah. um, you know, you talk to institutions where they can try and give some of them for free and some of them where you're subsidizing. Yeah, my project will be on mm. orphans. Okay. You know, orphans are one of the most neglected uh, children mm. in this country. Mm. Many people don't talk about them. Yeah, they are uh, often homes, children homes. But uh, imagine, for example, where I come from, Mandera. Mm. Two, I can say mm. in Mandera, two pilot farms, mm -hmm. which is currently good, flourishing, and they're getting lots of money from, from that produce. Mm. 
but that's specific for, for business. When we put a project for, for it will help a lot, yeah. more funds, lots mm -hmm. of more funds. Mm -hmm. yeah. The project is about women empowerment. You, you might want to partner with the feeder and others uh, who, who actually can help you uh, with that because I think those women have rights. Yeah, yeah my project has a focus on um, youth civic engagement mm -hmm. and um, I dubbed it uh, Youth Pup. Your enemies, your enemies will call it puppy. <laughs> you have to be careful. <laughs> and Aidan, you know, their projects are tight. But I think these ones have gaps in, in terms of uh, uh, the various challenges, uh, you know, the, they haven't thought through, um, like CIA, I think the issue of uh, resources, how resources will be shared is so critical uh, in the Constitution. And I think picking single mothers, since he's not a lawyer, he needs to partner with other people. Uh, so that is not just a question of them uh, carrying out projects for their own livelihood, but they have rights which, 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 which can be uh, validated. What I learned from uh, Honorable CJ is his humility. Yeah, one of the, one, what he told us is he's not judiciary and judiciary is not him. Leo! Think you can tell who will be leaving the show tonight? Send us a text message to 6264 starting with the word Maasai Market and stand a chance to win an Uongozi gift pack. Welcome back contestants. I would like to invite my, my two colleagues to begin. Joram, your CV that you handed in is dated 2009. Why? That CV from the year 2009, uh, well, I have like uh, in, in certain instances, taken time to just go through it, but not just to review the CV. So I think that was a, oh, it's a lapse on my side. I do not understand how you can hold a CV since 2009 and tell me that you have not, never reviewed it. I didn't have such intentions. So when did you put these referees onto this document, Joram? In 2009 or more recently? Um, that is 2009. One of the questions to us is, you know, if there was such a glaring in inaccuracy in your CV before, how accurate are these various other roles that uh, your CV claims you undertake? Your focus is, how do we engage the community in issues of governance? Exactly. So you want the community to be engaged in issues of governance? Yes. Okay, so that's your focus. Mm -hmm. Okay, now take us from there. How will you get this to happen? I would want, uh, like, a, a structure, a lasting structure. And this structure is not about telling people that there is something that has happened, we need to go and de demonstrate. Okay, Pole Pole Joram, take us step by step. How will you form this forum, this structure, okay. this framework? Formation of these structures, when we have village youth bungas and the rest, and it goes up to the county level. Mm -hmm. At the county level, we will have a team of people. And that is not Joram, those are youths from villages. I mean, they are, they are county youths. What, if anything? Would you change about your proposal, given the chance? Well, um, if I have the chance, I would review the proposal in entirety. But reviewing it is not changing the context. Solomon, how did you arrive at uh, the project that you did? Okay, first of all, we are living in a society whereby even with the fact that we have a constitution that gives people equal opportunities in, in a marriage relationship, is that the moment that relationship fails to continue and the partners have to work out, they don't get their equal share, their equal opportunities that they're entitled to. Are you married or divorced or are you single? Are I'm not you married. Married. I'm not divorced. Okay. Yeah. I still fail to see where the connection is between you and your own situation, which you say is not, uh, you ha you're not divorced. Okay. Um, and 
the fact that you want to support people who are divorced and you say that they're bitter. Okay, this bitterness, mm -hmm. first of all, comes at the point of separation. Are the numbers high enough, significant enough for you to think that if I do this in my community right now, I will make a very big difference? I did some research and this research was carried out in 2005 and now we are in 2013. So I think the, the figures have gone up. The research... You've done a research? Yeah, the research... Let's, let, let's give us a rough estimate. The figure was 48%. For coast province or for... The mm. coast province, the statistics province. carried out in 2005. Mm -hmm. And these statistics were carried out by a Muslim organization. In the design of your project, did you consider uh, the nuances of culture and religion? That How difficult might it be for you as a man and a non-Muslim? Dealing with the Muslim ladies, I know it's so difficult and it can, it can be provoking to the society if I, involved, if I involved so many men in it. And so one, one of my considerations is that mostly if I'm looking at the counselor, because this is a person who needs some good time with these ladies to talk, then it has to be a lady. Aiden, you say your project is community run. What does that mean? The project cannot be run by me alone since orphans come from the same community. So the community themselves will run the project. Who's managing this, the drilling of the borehole? Who's managing, how, where does this committee come from? I mean, how, how is it established? How is it set up? Yeah, the, the, the drilling aspect starts with me because I'll be the winner of the three million. In your proposal, what was your budget for this project? Mm -hmm. Uh, the initial drilling will cost us off the, 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 the drilling which is done by uh, one month ago is 1.5 million. That's the initial drilling. Uh, the generator, they bought it at 700,000. That's 2.5. Uh, How long will it take you to start making this 10,000 shilling profit per day? Not more than three months. Not more than three months. Yeah. And this will be sustained, this amount of money, 10,000, could be sustained for a year, two years, and can increase? So much. Increase to what would you estimate to be a maximum? 30,000. Per day? day? Yes. Uh, Eunice, you had a chance yesterday to engage with the panelists uh, regarding your CV. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that troubled me uh, is the fact that, you know, you've been away for about 10 years, mm -hmm. uh, yet you come back with a CV that has no referees on it. I know that it was an oversight. I do have them in mind and I, I, I speak to them. But um, having them on the CV, since I have not used the CV in that capacity, that was an oversight on my part. What are you doing currently? No, right now I'm doing an attachment at Kenyatta National Hospital. Didn't you need a CV to get that attachment? No, because it's obligatory for me to do it for me to be able to register as a doctor. Yes, but didn't they want to know your background? How did they? How did they come to know what Eunice has been doing they, and um, not a the medical board um, asked for my medical degree transcripts and that kind of thing you had a modem you had a computer you had a phone and uh, you didn't put in referees how did you arrive at this project my big dream was to open a girls school of excellence for you know girls who are from disadvantaged communities oh my who, goodness no <laughs> I mean, that's something I'd like to, you know, have my name on. But for now, not having the advantage of having a community that I was in for a long time, because mm -hmm. I only came back in March. Have you asked the girl childs about whether they want to do sciences? I spoke to my family. That's my aunt, and she has two younger daughters, one who was a Form 4 leaver from a long time ago and had to go into um, beauty training, and one is, is finishing. So I asked if, I, if someone came to, you, to talk to you about science, um, you know, uh, the fun side of science, would you, do you think there'd be girls who'd be receptive? And she said that, the one who's in, in secondary school, said that, yeah. I don't hear passion when you speak about this project. I hear you saying, I'll do as little as possible just to skate on the surface for of me, this particular project. I was trying to be realistic because be pl for me, in realistic, my head, Eunice, in my, when I was Eunice, speaking, Eunice, spoken to Eunice, yes. realistic, would be doing some research. You're coming in with your wings like an angel and you know, and you're deciding what it is people need and you're deciding what it is people want and, and what's, best. And what's mm. best for them and it's very colonial. I'm sorry. The judges will now deliberate, so you may now leave the situation room.
Certainly I have a lot of questions about Joram and I <clears throat> have had over the last several weeks. Uh, the issue of his CV came up today. Here's three million shillings at stake. We know how competitive Joram has been. Mm. You're not going to tell me that uh, given the opportunity to prepare a proposal, he does not, and he knows he has two other documents that have to accompany that proposal. Uh, um, uh, what do you call it? A profile and a CV, mm. and he doesn't update his he CV from 2009? Mm. I don't believe that. That's the, one of the most alarming things for me yeah. is that despite the fact that I think we asked him at least on two occasions, mm -hmm, really, mm -hmm. what is the final outcome yeah. of this project? Yeah. Uh, we, we didn't get any clarity on that. He was unable to, to, to tell us really, you know, it was all about setting up structures and committees and bringing youth together and electing people. And um, saying that <coughs> the youth themselves don't go to the structures that already exist, so not, not then explaining why it is that they would come to this magical one of his. Eunice, who's uh, been computer savvy so far, mm. uh, who's been well organized, can sit and say one, that uh, she did not know that she needed to put in referees, even personal ones. She thought she could that. only put well, in. For one thing, it doesn't make it, sense. What, what, wasn't, what was interesting is that she had the referees. Mm. They just weren't the ones she thought they were supposed to be. But she didn't put so she didn't even, put any. she, she didn't, didn't put, put any. any. Yeah. And it's like, you know, why would you not put anything in at all? But it also becomes more suspicious when, fine, on her CV she doesn't have referees, mm -hmm. but then on her profile mm -hmm. uh, she omits the question that asks her to give the contact date details for her supervisor. Yeah. In her current job her right current now. Job. With her it was sort of like, no, I'll do that when I win. After how, I win, I'll give the three million, then I can put my How is anybody to going to give you three million shillings if they don't know what it is you're going to do <laughs> with it? <laughs> It became clear that, uh, and this isn't the, in the only task that it's happened, that you know there's been this sort of, uh, uh, I, I think Mumbi called it a colonial, uh, a colonial yeah. approach, yeah. Yeah. Uh, where, whereby you tell you know, people what their problems are and that you, you have the solutions. Is. Exactly. Let's, let's, let's turn and look at, uh, look at Solomon. He says he's a quick study that uh, he'll, be, he'll take time to learn on the job or go for mm -hmm. training and therefore come back and be able to oversee this, this project and mm -hmm. make sure it succeeds. Again, he says he spoke to two people. That's and from, from talking to two people, mm -hmm. he's, he says that uh, he's going to scale up the project to, to help 100 people. Problem yeah. that uh, you know, many divorced ladies are, uh, are, are having issues that, mm -hmm. that, that, that need counseling. Emotional counsel problems, that have, that need counseling and yeah. the rest of it. You know, uh, how, you know is, should he be dealing with that or you know, should he be dealing with why are all these divorces taking place in the first place? Mm -hmm. I think that for me, the, the, the project that Aden has is... <clears throat> I can feel it. I can see it. I can, you know, I can, I it's can, tangible. See, it's tangible mm -hmm. and I can feel <clears throat> that he would get buy-in from his community because he's from there. He understands the problems of the people there. Does he have the skills, competence to run this particular project? Adam is a scientist dealing with issues of sickle Medical cell, research. malaria, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. He's working again. Uh, the other thing is that he works away from home. He works in Kilifi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think to, he can only offer it. And hopefully as not say. to mention the money, because the money might be an incentive for them to say, yes, of course it'll work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think Fellow we're judges, good. I mm. think we've made a decision. Mm -hmm. Yes. <gasps> Whew. We have come to a decision. The first person going home today is Joram. The second person going home today is Eunice. Solomon and Aidan, congratulations. You have come to the last stage of the competition. You are two very deserving, very deserving people to be in the positions that you are. As a reward, you will have an evening at the Tribe Hotel. We look forward to seeing you for the remainder of this process. Uh, 
I personally did not expect that I would be eliminated at this particular stage. But uh, I, I saw a precursor yesterday uh, when um, one of the um, panelists that was uh, actually interviewing us told me that I was not going to win this uh, competition. Uh, this is not the death of uh, uh, youth pub. Youth pub is youth progressive agenda podium. And by the way, pub in Luo means a uh, field. With Judge Mumbi, I think sometimes the emotion kind of got in the way, because today, especially when she called me a colonialist, I thought that I was like something completely out there and not necessary. <laughs> Personally, I have, I have no words. Still uh, uh, speaking, I came all, all the way. Uh, it's a shocker. It's by the grace of God that uh, we are here. We are not the, um, personally, I'm not the smartest of all the 16, but being in the last two, Allahu Akbar. The competition had very strong people, but to have made, this far, to have made it this far, it's not that perhaps I'm the smartest, because we had some of the smartest people here, guys with degrees, guys who've done much in society. But I believe that this is a point for me to to perhaps have an opportunity in the leadership of this country. Good afternoon. How, How are, are you today? I'm good. You're most welcome to try it. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Thank you. How are you? Welcome to Tribe. Thank you. Solomon and Aidan. Yeah. Just need your signatures. Okay. Welcome this way, please. <coughs> okay. And if you don't mind, I'll just give you a proof room in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. <sighs> so these are master bed, eh? Wow! Well, lo, 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 lo. To me, it's paradise. Yeah, huh? very nice place. A very so nice. that's the swimming pool there. What is it? Wow! Huh? Yes. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Fine, thank you. My name is Besson. I'll be your server tonight. To continue this conversation, go to www.wongozi.co.ke or you can like our Facebook page, Wongozi Kenya, or follow us on Twitter at Wongozi254. Think you can tell who will be leaving the show tonight? Send us a text message to 6264 starting with the word Maasai Market and stand a chance to win an Uongozi gift pack. <laughs>